Maintaining a paver properly requires keeping your machine clean as well as performing daily and routine maintenance. One key aspect of maintaining your paver is cleaning the machine. This is important to make it easier to identify issues like loose wires or a missing bolt, but cleaning is also important for optimal operation. For example, to avoid old makes falling off your machine and onto the mat. Before staff can inspect the paver and perform routine maintenance, the machine has to be cleaned. How can you see that a wire has come loose if it's covered with a gob of hardened liquid AC? And how can you tell if a bolt is missing if the area is slimed with mud and grease? How can you tell if a safety decal is torn or partially gone if the area is covered with a layer of dirt and grime? You have to clean the machine first to give yourself a chance for proper maintenance. You'll also want to clean the machine for good operation. You don't want caked on chunks of mix falling off the paver's push rollers onto the lane where your new mat is about to be laid. That chunk will represent an area of missed compaction. Not to mention, it's difficult for push rollers to turn and facilitate easy movement of the haul truck and tractor if they're caked with old material. Then you'll have slips and catches that jar the machines and transfer ripples onto the mat. Just like when working with the distributor and haul truck, cleaning is easier when things are still warm. A hot mix will soften the material that's caked onto the machine, and then you can remove it with a putty knife. But if you're working with cooled equipment before your shift begins, you might need a sledgehammer to chip off that old asphalt. To successfully clean and maintain the paver, you'll need to conduct daily cleaning, wash down the machine regularly, and inspect the paver inside and out. Let's talk about how to do each one of these steps. For daily cleaning, you'll need to remove debris, dirt, and dust from the radiator and engine, as well as the external screed controls and operating deck. You'll also need to clean the augers, hopper, and drivetrain. And you'll want to spray down all surfaces that come into contact with asphalt with an asphalt release agent. In addition to this daily maintenance, at least twice a month, you should completely wash down the machine. You might do this more often if the volume of material going through the machine requires more frequent cleaning. After cleaning, the paver should be inspected to ensure there are no leaks, electrical problems, loose bolts, or other issues that can negatively affect production that day. The first step is to walk around the machine looking for visible damage like cracks, corrosion, and fluid leaks. Also check the hopper to make sure it doesn't have cracks and that the rubber is in good condition. For rubber track pavers, check the rubber track assemblies for excessive wear and check the tension. Then you should check the augers to be sure none are cracked or broken. You'll also want to check under the screed for slopes, match height, edge plate wear, etc. Checking for wear on the screed plate is very important. When it's less than a quarter of an inch thick, it's time for a new screed plate. You can extend the life of your screed plate by following good maintenance practices. For example, think about your angle of attack. You want to align the toe point cylinder correctly so you don't cause the nose of the screed to go too far up or too far down. If the toe point is set too low and the angle of attack is too low, the nose of the screed goes down. This causes the nose of the screed to wear out faster than the rest of the plate. If the toe point is set too high and the angle of attack is too high, the nose of the screed goes up. This causes the tail of the screed to wear out faster than the rest of the plate. There are some other things you can also do to help the screed wear more evenly. For example, maintain the auger sensors and ensure proper flow and distribution of the material in front of the screed. You should also use a straight edge to check the screed transversely. Then you should use a four foot level to check it longitudinally and also check the extensions like you see in this image. Next, you'll need to check the fuel gauge level and fill with red dye diesel as necessary. Then you can check the hydraulic oil level of the hydraulic system and make sure there are no leaks. The surface level should be visible in the sight glass, so be sure to top it off if necessary. Then you should check the operator area and set up the laser depth systems. Check for damages and missing sections of safety.